Good morning and hey howdy. I'm glad you're here because you know what? You showed up at a great time because this is story time in Mr. Adams' neighborhood. That's right. Some of you folks, well, I was going to say older, but you remember Mr. Rogers? Well, today is Mr. Adams, and this is the story how we worked with an inspector after a red tag working in an obsolete panel. So here's the scenario. I'm not going to tell you because I want you to like, click like, and subscribe first. Get that done. Here you go. You'll look up here. Paul, get in close if you can't read this. This is, we're back at the infamous garage subpanel, but I put up a post-it here and said, hey, here's a scenario where you're trying to add GFCI or arc fault protection in an old panel. This is not an old panel, but to illustrate, I've put like Federal Pacific, Zinsco, Pushmatic, Sylvania. These are all older panels that if you wanted to buy a GFCI or arc fault breaker, you could not. It would be very difficult. So what we're doing is we're adding that protection by adding, uh, remoting the circuit through a GFCI or an arc fault receptacle. Okay, so here's the story. We're doing a remodel in a 60s house. We've run a circuit uh, for smoke detectors. And as you guys remember in the code, once you run a new circuit or new wiring more than six feet, it has to be arc fault. It was an old panel, like we're imagining this one to be. And I think it was a Federal Pacific. So we thought we were being smart. And what we did is we took this new circuit, routed it through a GFI, or rather an arc fault. It was an arc fault receptacle, fantastic. And when we're, and I'll, we'll go through the wiring here in a second, but it went through and we were great. Inspector comes out. I'm not saying he was a bad man, but he did give me a red tag and I'm, I'm not, uh, hang on. Not a fan of red tags, don't like them. And I said, why? He said, this panel's in the garage and you put an arc fault receptacle, but it's a receptacle in the garage. It's supposed to be GFI protected also. Here's my discovery for you folks who have old houses with obsolete panels. Leviton makes a combination receptacle that is both arc fault and GFCI. So we change that, problem solved. So how do we do that? Here's the hack. Again, you're working in a, a 50 or 60 year old panel. You can't just stick in a GFCI arc fault breaker. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna say, for instance, this is for a dishwasher. Now again, you guys know that in the newer code cycles, dishwashers are supposed to be GFCI protected but the kicker is that GFCI is supposed to be readily accessible. And that's a new change in the code. It used to be just accessible. Here's the difference. Just accessible means you could walk up, open a cabinet or a door, walk somewhere else, push that reset button. We're all happy. It's a great day. However, with readily accessible, you have to be able to walk up. If you look at Article 100, not unlock, not have to do anything, climb anywhere, crawl through an attic. You have to walk up and just be able to push that reset button. That's a problem because if you're in an older house, that plug for the dishwasher is not easy to get to. And some of these houses don't have plugs. Yes, right. Some of you will know that. you guilty. You got the conscience look on your face. It's like, yeah, I pulled out my dishwasher. There's a piece of Romex stuck out into the back of the wall. Another reason to remote this. So here's what we're going to do. Let's say we want to add arc fault or GFCI protection. Here's our old circuit. And you can see right here, here's my Romex. Thanks, Paul, for getting in there. Here's the 12-2. So this is going to become the load side of this GFCI. Okay? And I've already preloaded the GFCI. And I did this just so you can see this. This is going to be line. This will be the power coming directly from the breaker and from the, uh, the neutral bus. And then the load will be attached directly to these two wires going into the house. So all that does, if you imagine a, a long line or a line diagram, is dishwasher, hot neutral, going through the GFI and going to the breaker. And what that does, that allows us to have GF, GFCI protection for that dishwasher that we can get to that meets the code requirement. It is readily accessible. Okay, so I've turned this off. I'm going to, and we can speed this up. We're going to un undo some of these and some of these are stripped so we're probably going to end up cutting and stripping. That's right, that even happens here. Here we go. So again, these are the wires that are going directly to the appliance. So here's, while we're doing this, the other places you can apply this, again, if you're working in an older house, not only is it maybe they don't make these breakers, but maybe 
just for your situation, you can't get them. And that, that happens right now with supply chains the way it is. We've had uh, lots of issues where we could not find, for instance, certain size cutler hammer breakers, just so we have to find other ways around that. So again, GFCI, line and load, what's going to happen is the line, which is right here I marked with uh, wire nuts, is going to go directly to the breaker on the bus. Load, which I twisted so I can keep these wires straight, is going to be wire nutted on, and now it's going to go directly back to the dishwasher. Okay, And again, I'm saying dishwasher, this could be if you ran a new circuit uh, for hardwired smoke detectors. Uh, another countertop circuit, it doesn't matter, but if you're meeting current code and working in an old house, once we run wiring more than six feet, it's got to be arc fault and or GFCI protected depending on where it's going. And so doing this remote is a way, a workaround to give you what's required by code, uh, but not have to say, well, no, to do this, you have to change your panel. And a lot of times that's what some contractors are going to tell you. Hey, you've got a federal, you need to change it. We all know that. But maybe today you just want to get your dishwasher right. You don't want to spend three or four grand on a panel change. So I'm going to make up these connections real quick and uh, I'll show you what it looks like on the tail end. So I'm going to wire up the load wires first and work my way back towards the breaker. Uh, my preference is to always twist the wires, especially with Love Solid. So here we go. So a reminder from the other videos, when you guys strip wires, uh, be, be gentle. I've seen some of you guys work. Some of you guys are brutes. Dude, be kind. In other words, don't nick the crap out of your wires. Because <laughs> when you twist them like this, if you do that, you are going to uh, have these wires break in a matter of weeks or months. They're going to bust off, and you're going to have somebody saying, hey, this is dead. I thought it was supposed to work. Uh, while I'm working, the other thing is the panel's hot, and I'm trying to remember that um, for you if you're less experienced or if it's too crowded. Again, a lot of times if this is an obsolete panel, uh, this panel is going to be crowded. Uh, older panels didn't have nearly the wire space uh, that these uh, new ones do. So in that case, I would go out for this sub panel or your main and shut it off and just not worry about it. Okay. Now we're going to land, again, the wires coming from the dishwasher, in this case, to the load side of that's this GFI. And here we go. And again, we'd already had the line side wired up, so load side hot. Uh, quick reminder, when you guys are hooking up GFCIs, you remember years ago, the line side was always by the ground screw, which is down here. Well, in the last several years, depending on the, the GFI, the line and load is, is, could be on the top of the, the GFI or at the bottom by the ground. Make sure you read the print on the back. If you wire it backwards, you're going to have to do it again because it's going to trip. Okay, I'm checking my connections. We're nice and snug. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to get these out of the way just for a second. I'm going to pre-fold these wires. Again, I'm using a four square box. I don't know what you guys call these where you work. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not jamming these or nicking these against anything of the metal. Let's close it up. The other thing you can do here, and again, this was set up for, on one of the other videos, we had drywall on these two boards. So the other way to do this is to do a, a one gang or a two gang cut in box if you have drywall and do the same thing. It'll fish Romex, a 12 2 line, and a 12 2 load going out and do the same thing and just have a flush GFI. Okay. So the other part of that is then to remember to label it when you're done. So here we go. We're going to find, I got to figure out why this panel, why we have so many stripped out. Uh, terminals here because that's a bummer. Okay, here we go. And again, we're hooking up finally the line side, and we should trim some of these down. Thank you, Paul. So, what we've done 
is installed a remote GFCI and or arc fault to protect uh, an existing older circuit, okay, to meet code. And this is a big deal because a lot of times when you're remodeling, um, like in the story I told, we were part of a whole scope, um, and that was an eye-opener, mostly because you can get an arc fault combination GFCI plug and cover all those bases. All right, here we go. Let's turn it on. That's right. Are we kind of stepping back? Okay, turn it on. I always step to the side. Okay, test. Okay, good. So here's what's so here's where we're at now. Is that dishwasher now that was directly wired to the breaker is now wired line and load through the GFCI. So now I've created a readily accessible GFCI protection. And again, could be arc fault protection. But it's a great um, hack that keeps you from having to say, hey, I just want to put in a, a breaker, an arc fault or GFCI breaker, but I have to change the panel to do that. I think that's, anyway, you need to have some alternatives versus, again, spending all that money. So I'd love to hear your input, your constructive input. Um, but Article 210.8, the new GFCI requirements from uh, 2017 and especially 2020, this is a thing, again, with readily accessible, um, because you can't put a GFCI behind that dishwasher under the sink. It doesn't work. So when you live in an older house, there you go. And this is a great hack, and it's not hard to do. Thanks for your time. Again, click like and subscribe. Let's hear what you got. Take care.